The God Protocol by Sam Gerens Published 2021 See Coronite.com Chapter 9 Lot Lot and the cities thrown down There are some differences between the Quran's presentation of Lot's mission to the people of his city and what we find in Genesis 19 but they do not substantially impact the familiar storyline. For example, the Quranic narrative nowhere names the cities, although knowledge of their previous existence is assumed for the initial hearers of the Quranic preaching. Of more dramatic consequence is the fact that the biblical narrative, wherein Lot's wife is turned to a pillar of salt upon looking back, is both absent from the Quran and, perhaps, incompatible with it. The basic Quranic narrative is that Lot stands up and warns his people against their practice of perversion. Footnote. Since an integral and expedited item in the approved agenda of demoralization and degeneration rolled out by the ruling elites in recent decades has been the promotion and normalization of homosexuality and its imposition upon the human herd, we need to be clear from the outset on the fact that sodomy is a sin. Compliant academics and writers have attempted to revise the common understanding of the narrative treating of the people of Lot at Genesis 19 to suit the agenda just cited. Within this revisionist framework, the sin of the men of Sodom is reimagined as something other than the one which bears the name of their city. Such assertions require mental acrobatics and much intellectual dishonesty to survive any comparison with the biblical account, of course. But no amount of deceit practised upon oneself or others can bludgeon the Quranic narratives treating of the same events into anything other than their intended shape, namely that the people of Lot were destroyed for the practice of male sodomy. No other interpretation is possible, even for a liberal academic. To continue. And he is rejected and threatened with eviction from the city. Subsequently, messengers from God come to Abraham, both to give him the news of a son and to tell him of the punishment to come upon the people of Lot. Abraham pleads with God for the people of Lot and is chided and his entreaty rebuffed. The messengers then visit Lot, who attempts to protect them, one assumes from the unnatural attention of men of the city. The men of the city then turn their attentions upon Lot, who is protected from them by the messengers. The messengers tell him to flee the city, which he does, while his wife stays behind. The city is then destroyed by a hail of, quote, stones of baked clay, end quote. We are thoroughly acquainted by now with the concept of elided events, having been able both to identify them and study their details in the cases of Hood and Abraham, as well as from our study of various kinds of narrative summary. While Lot does not expressly address himself to the ruling elite, quote, the eminent ones, end quote, in the text, in the segments below, we know that such was the case on the basis of what we saw at chapter 8. In summary, then, local specifics and emphasis notwithstanding, the narrative is standard. A man warns the community to which he belongs, rejection of that man's message by the people to which he was sent, and that community's subsequent destruction at the hand of God. In this chapter, we are primarily interested in explicit features, all features not explicitly mentioned which are covered by generic narrative summaries must be assumed to have occurred, though elided from the narrative. Footnote, see chapter 8. To continue. Since a significant number of portions of text treat of this narrative, they are grouped together below in sections with related narrative characteristics under four headings. 1. General Statements and Summaries Quote, and Lot, when he said to his people, Do you commit sexual immorality that none among all mankind has preceded you? You approach men with lust rather than women. The truth is, you are a people committing excess. 
and the response of his people was only that they said, Turn them out of your city, they are a people who keep themselves pure. And we delivered him and his household, save his wife, she was of those who stayed behind. And we rained upon them a rain, then see thou how was the final outcome of the lawbreakers. 7, 80 through 81. Lot goes to, quote, his people, end quote, which is standard. The crime for which he upbraids them is precisely that of male sexual relations, and no other interpretation is possible. The people then seek to expel the warner, also a generic event. As mentioned above, Lot's wife, quote, stayed behind, end quote, there being no mention of her looking back or being turned into a pillar of salt in the Quranic narrative. The people of Lot were then destroyed in an act of God for the crime for which Lot upbraided them. We shall see the same components repeat with sundry shades of emphasis in the segments below. Quote, and Lot, we gave him judgment and knowledge, and we delivered him from the city that was doing bad deeds. They were an evil people, perfidious, and we made him enter into our mercy. He was among the righteous. 21, 74-75 And, quote, The people of Lot denied the emissaries when their brother Lot said to them, Will you not be in prudent fear? I am to you a trustworthy messenger. So be in prudent fear of God and obey me and I ask of you for it no reward. My reward is only upon the Lord of all creation. Do you approach the males among all mankind, and leave what your Lord created for you among your wives? The truth is, you are a transgressing people. They said, If thou seest not, O Lot, thou wilt be of those turned out. He said, I am of those who abhor your deed. My Lord, deliver thou me and my household from what they do. And we delivered him and his household altogether, save an old woman among those who stayed behind. Then we annihilated the others, and we rained upon them a rain, and evil is the rain of those who were warned. In that is a proof, but most of them are not believers. And thy Lord, he is the exalted in might, the merciful. 26, 160-175 And quote, And Lot, when he said to his people, Do you commit sexual immorality with open eyes? Do you approach men with lust instead of women? The truth is, you are a people in ignorance. But the response of his people was only that they said, Turn the family of Lot out of your city. They are men who keep themselves pure. And we delivered him and his household, save his wife. We decreed her to be of those who stayed behind. And we rained upon them a rain and evil is the reign of those who were warned. 27, 54 through 58. And quote. And Lot was among the emissaries, when we delivered him and his household altogether, save an old woman among those who stayed behind. Then destroyed we the others, and you pass by them in the morning and at night. Will you then not use reason? 37, 133 through 138. And quote. Hast thou not considered how thy Lord did with the companions of one week in judgment? Did he not make their plans go astray? And he sent against them flights in droves, striking them with stones of baked clay. Then he made them like eaten straw. 105, 1 through 5. Footnote. The reader should be aware that the traditionalist 
ascribes 105 1 through 5 to an entirely different scenario. However, on the basis of the Quranic text, the references directly relate to the destruction of the people of Lot. Since our analysis does not turn upon this segment, we can leave consideration of it here. To continue. 2. Before the messengers come to Lot. And quote. And when the alarm had left Abraham, and the glad tidings had reached him of a son, he disputed with us concerning the people of Lot. Abraham was clement, compassionate, penitent. O Abraham, forsake thou this. The command of thy Lord has come, and there will come to them a punishment which cannot be repelled. 11, 74 through 76. And quote. He, Abraham, said, Then what is your business, O emissaries? They said, We have been sent to a law-breaking people, save the house of Lot. Them will we deliver altogether, save his wife. We decreed that she be of those who stay behind. 15, 57 through 60. And quote. And when our messengers came to Abraham with the glad tidings of a son, they said, We will destroy the people of this city. Its people are wrongdoers. He said, Therein is Lot, they said. We best know who is therein. We will deliver him and his household, save his wife. She is of those who stay behind. 29, 31-32 the three segments above treat of Abraham's exchange with messengers sent to deliver God's verdict upon the people of Lot. And, quote, and Lot, when he said to his people, You commit sexual immorality, that none among all mankind has preceded you. Do you approach men and cut off the way and commit perversity in your assemblies? Then the response of his people was only that they said, Bring thou us the punishment of God, if thou be of the truthful. He said, My Lord, help thou me against the people who work corruption. 29, 28-30 The segment above is a parenthetical aside within a broader section treating of Abraham. The narrative then returns to Abraham, see 2931 through 32 above, following which it rejoins the story of Lot, see 2933 through 35, in the next section. We will recognize the response of his people as standard under the protocol. 3. When the messengers have come to Lot. Quote, and when our messengers came to Lot, he was distressed for them, and straitened with unease for them, and he said, This is a trying day. And his people came to him, hastening towards him, and before had they been doing evil deeds. He said, O oh my people, these are my daughters, they are purer for you. So be in prudent fear of God, and disgrace me not concerning my guests. Is there then not among you a right-minded man? They said, Thou knewest we have no right to thy daughters, and thou knowest what we desire. He said, Would that I had power against you, or could take shelter in a strong support. Said they, O Lord, we are messengers of thy Lord, they will not reach thee. And travel thou with thy household during a portion of the night, and let not any one of you turn around save thy wife. There will befall her what befalls them. Their appointment is the morning. Is then the morning not near? And when our command came, we utterly overthrew it, and rained upon it stones of baked clay, piled up in layers, marked in the sight of thy Lord, and it is not far from the wrongdoers. 11, 
77 through 83. And quote. And when the emissaries came to the house of Lot, he said, You are people unknown. They said, The truth is, we bring thee that concerning which they doubted, and we come to thee with the truth, and we are the truthful. So travel thou with thy household in a portion of the night, and follow thou their backs, and let not any one of you turn round, but go on to where you are commanded. And we decreed for him that command, The root of those will be cut off in the morning. And the people of the city came rejoicing. He said, These are my guests, so put me not to shame, and be in prudent fear of God, and disgrace me not. They said, Did we not forbid you all mankind? He said, These are my daughters, if you must act. By thy life they were in their intoxication wandering blindly. And the blast seized them at sunrise, and we utterly overthrew it, and rained upon it stones of baked clay. In that are proofs for those who can discern, and it is upon an enduring road. In that is a proof for the believers. 1561-77 And quote. And when our messengers came to Lot, he was distressed for them and felt unable to protect them. And they said, Fear thou not, nor grieve. We will deliver thee and thy household, save thy wife. She is of those who stay behind. We will send upon the people of this city a scourge from the sky, because they were perfidious. And we have left thereof a proof as clear evidence for people who reason. 29, 33 through 35. And quote. The people of Lot denied the warnings. We sent upon them a storm of stones, save the family of Lot. We delivered them at dawn, as favour from us. Thus do we reward him who is grateful. And he had warned them of our seizing, but they disputed the warnings. And they demanded of him his guests, so we put out their eyes. Then taste my punishment and my warnings. And in the early morning there came upon them an abiding punishment. Then taste my punishment and my warnings. And we have made the Qur'an easy for remembrance. So is there any who will remember. 54 33 through 40. 4. Inclusion in narrative summaries. Quote, Has not the report of those before them come to them, the people of Noah, and Ad, and Thamud, and the people of Abraham, and the people of Madian, and the cities thrown down? Their messengers brought them clear signs, and God wronged them not, but they wronged their souls. 9.70 and, quote, and there came Pharaoh, and those before him, and the cities thrown down through offence. And they opposed the messenger of their Lord, but he seized them with a surpassing grip. 69, 9-10 As mentioned above, the cities of Lot are not named in the Qur'an. They are rather referred to as the cities thrown down. Characteristic sins of the Warner's people Sodomy Sexual relations between men Idolatry Taking a god other than God Preference for idolatry when presented with a call to God. Actions of the warner Receives a commission from God. Told by God that the wrongdoers will be destroyed. Advances reasoned arguments. 
approaches a people to which he belongs, comes with clear signs, writings or the illuminating writ, uses the appeal, O my people, warns of punishment, calls the hearers to fear God, states that he is a warner or messenger, exhorts the hearers to obey him, states that he seeks no reward from those to whom he is conveying warning, places his affair entirely in the hands of God, appeals to God. Actions of those the warner addresses. Deny, oppose or disregard the warner. Plan to expel the warner. Call for the punishments of God. Deride or mock the warner. The conclusion of the matter. God delivers the warner and those who believed with him. God annihilates those who reject the warner. The conclusion of the matter entails a proof. God does not wrong them, but they wronged their souls. God seizes the rejecters with a surpassing grip. Contemporary echoes of sins characteristic of that time. Idolatry and polytheism are standard today, as noted in chapter 4. While not emphasised in the narrative, we know that such was in evidence, since Lot calls the hearers to fear God. The emphasis in the narrative is on the sin of homosexuality. This is what Lot cautioned, reasoned, inveighed and warned against. There is no suggestion that the people of his city were, quote, born that way, end quote, to echo contemporary propaganda. Rather, they are, quote, a law-breaking people, end quote, and, quote, a transgressing people, end quote, and, quote, a people committing excess, end quote. Thus, their unnatural act is the result of conscious rebellion against God-given limits. The efficacy of the agenda to indoctrinate the world into a sodomite culture hardly needs rehearsing here. The sin of the people of Lot is not only tolerated by the ruling elites of today, it has been forcibly insinuated into every part of life and made a central plank of the ideology the rulers require those under them to submit to.